God right now. Just lift your hands up and just give a praise.
Our speaker, Cicely Holmes, is affectionately known as Legacy. She's a true force to be reckoned with. The ability to conquer what seems to be insurmountable experiences has birthed a passion in her to see women walk in wholeness. Both the Men in Broken Heart Conference and Divorce But Not Denied are occasions for her to teach women from all walks of life applicable skills and tools that aid them in their journey towards healing. The success of Men in Broken Hearts has provided her the opportunity to facilitate the conference on both the East and West Coast. Cecilia is an eagle-eyed prophet whose words do not fall to the ground. As co-pastor, she works, works alongside her husband, leading and guiding the members of Lighthouse Christian and Lighthouse Church Ministries. Although a mentor to many, she understands that her first ministry is her husband and children. She has proven herself to be an accomplished entrepreneur in the marketplace as well. For the past 11 years, Cecilia has owned and operated in and out tax services. The success of in and out has led her to establish Meeting of the Minds, where young business owners receive innovative guidance to their business to the next level, taking their business to the next level. When faced with difficult situations, Cecilia reminds the word, the word God spoken directly to her heart, this is not personal, this is kingdom business. It has become her mission in life to help others live by these same words. Would y'all say with me, preach the word? Preach the word. 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 Prophet Cecilia Holt. After this song, we'll hear Prophet Cecilia Holt.
go to do just what he said he would do. Amen. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Somebody say, I won't give up on God. Because he won't give up on me. He is truly able. Amen. Ain't no need of giving up on him. Because when you must stand by him, he showed he give up on you. Amen. We just got to tell you the truth on this night of the last. Ain't no need to get mad at him. For him taking his time to do what we've been asking for. You took your time to come to him. Amen. So I remember one time crying to God about a situation. And I said, God, you just acting like you don't hear me. He said, well, you did it for 20 some years, so it's okay. Amen. So, uh, first, definitely want to give honor what honor is due. Just to give honor to God. Just so grateful for the opportunity of life. Amen. Amen. I heard the mother that was up here and she said, even after COVID, we're still here. Amen. And because of that, we ought to tell God, thank you for life. Amen. Because we know too many people that didn't make it. But we were not at that number. And so we give God glory and honor for the opportunity for life. I give honor to Pastor Coleman, um, First Lady Coleman. I was asking uh, Minister uh, Peter Nesson, where's the First Lady and uh, I mean, when you were up here, she said, well, that is my mama, but that's First Lady over there, amen. So I give honor to you, First Lady, amen. Uh, I give honor to Minister Perry. I tell you, she has been a amazing uh, host. I mean, she has been amazing. I mean, from, I think they started reaching out to me back in maybe February of this year, and I promise you I'll probably get an email from her every week asking for something or confirming something. And so I just thank God for you too. Now I don't see the person that called my number that got me here. It was Sister Keisha, but I don't see her here. Amen. Um, and then I guess maybe she'll come in later, but I was wondering, I said, well, how did they hear about me? And then uh, my sister said to me, she said, Keisha asked for your information. I said, okay, I'm going to have to tell Keisha thank you too, amen. And so I thank God for you all. I thank God for my pastor, my husband, my man of God, Pastor Roger Pope Sr., amen. The pastor of Lighthouse Church Ministry. I thank God for our members that came with me. Um, I have to thank God, y'all. Let me say this. I thank God. Make sure that house understand. I thank God for you all that will be in the place. But I want to say I thank God for my five AMC partners. My God. I do a call every Monday morning at 5 a.m. And I see about, I know I see about five of them in the room. Two traveled all the way from Atlanta, Georgia. I told them, I said, man, that look like Patricia. And that look like Ruth. And I'm saying, that's really deal, baby. So I thank God for you all. They traveled all the way to, from Georgia. And I'm so grateful. Amen. Thank you, Sister Marsha. Amen. Coming on today, I thank God for the Galilee Missionary Baptist Church for allowing me to be here. And every minister, every, you know, bishop, prophet, whatever your title is, I just thank God for you all today. And singers, you all did an amazing job. Amen. I was trying to contain myself, but I couldn't. I said, now that's singing up there. Amen. So I thank God for you. If you have your Bibles, we're going to go ahead and get in the Word on today, um, it's okay, yeah, 2 Timothy, we're looking at the first chapter, the fifth through the seventh verse, and I'm reading from uh, the Living Bible, okay, I'm going to read verse 7 in the King James Version, but you don't have to go there because I'm only going to read verse 7 in the King James Version, and it says, I know how much you trust the Lord, just as your mother Eunice and your grandmother Lois do. And I feel sure you are still trusting him as much as ever. This being so, I want to remind you to stir into flame the strength and boldness that is in you, that entered into you when I laid my hands upon your head and blessed you. For the Holy Spirit 
God's gift does not want you to be afraid of people, but to be wise and strong and to love them and enjoy being with them. I want to use for a title on today, Use What Your Heavenly Father Gave You. Let's pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, God, we thank you on tonight, God. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for what our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard. We thank you, Father God, for the precious Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord God, that you have already shown yourself to be mighty in this place, God. Now, Father God, I thank you, Lord God, that you attuned their ears to be sensitive from you. You have attuned their ears to hear from you, God. God, you will open up their hearts to receive from you, Lord God. You will allow them to hear what you're saying on tonight, Father God. I thank you, God, for using me like only you can. God, take everything, God, that will hinder me from giving this message on tonight. I bind the fear, I bind the worry, I bind the doubt. I lose the anointing of God, I lose the power of the Holy Ghost. And I declare that free God that yokes will be broken and captives will be set free. I declare that free that you will get the glory out of this place. I declare that free God that no life will be the same after tonight, God. I declare the presence of the Holy Ghost is running through this place, God. I declare that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it been put into the heart of man, God. What you got to start for us in this room, God, because we love you, God, and because we're gone according to your word. Now, God, let this word, God, be understood by the least of your people. Let me make this word so plain on tonight that even a baby will be able to understand it. And I declare the decree, Lord God, that you will get the glory. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. And we say amen. And we say thank you, God. I know you all don't remember this song. Because you've been saved all your life. But it might be about two or three of you in here that are saying, I know what you're talking about. It was a song back in the day, and it was Shake What Your Mama Gave. Y'all heard that? Yeah. The songwriter was saying, and you know, he was saying, you know, this is a women's conference, and he was talking about the backside, shake it. Your mama gave you that, so just shake it, right? And so as I was preparing for the message, God said to me that I want you to title this message, Use What Your Heavenly Father Gave When I was a little girl, Ruby, when I would do something wrong or when I would, you know, get in trouble in school, my mama would say stuff like, you just like your dad. Everything negative about me, it came from my dad. But when I did good, she would say, now you just like me. You just like my folks. Now see, let me tell you something. My folks, that you can never my folks, you know. But anything that was negative, it was always, you can get from your dad. Now that's the type of stuff that daddy folks do. You know what I'm saying? And so, as I was preparing the message, God reminded me of my mom. And my mom graduated high school at the age of 16. My mom got skipped two times in high school. And she entered into mom's college at the age of 16. My mom graduated in four years from Miles at the age of 20 with her bachelor's degree. My mom is very, very smart. I have three sisters, I have two sisters, it's three of us. I'm the oldest one. And my two sisters, Angela and Joy, um, they were really smart. Angela went to the University of Alabama. 
She mastered it and came out of that in four years. Then she went on to get her master's at UAB. Joy has about maybe two more semesters left um, to get her nursing degree. But me, I didn't choose that one.
is that fear did not come from your heavenly father. If you are operating in a spirit of fear, I come to let you know that did not come from your heavenly father. It came from the father of lies. The enemy wants you to operate in fear that you will never fulfill the destiny on your life. The scripture says God has not given you fear. So with the fear that has to try to creep up on your life and control your life, you better recognize where it came from. Fear to not step out on faith and start the business. Fear not thinking that you're good enough to get a husband or a wife. Fear that you're going to die broke. Fear that you're going to die sick. Fear that your children will never be all that God has said that they were going to be. Worse the enemy. And you need to recognize when that spirit comes up on the inside of you, you have to recognize who it came from. And anything that does not come from God, I don't want it. I had enough stuff over my years of living in any kind of way that came from the devil. And I refuse now that I have laid down my life for the kingdom of God to carry anything that don't come from my God. Saturday. But then on Sunday, 
and a sound mind. Let me deal with power last, if that's okay. I want to first deal with love. Our Heavenly Father has given us the ability to love. I'm not talking about loving the lovable. I'm talking about the ones that have persecuted you. I'm talking about the ones that have lied on you. I'm talking about loving the ones that have dogged you out. That said all malice and evil against you. I'm talking about the love that he's put on the inside of us to love the unlovable. God has given us the ability to love. According to Matthew 5, 43 to 48, the NIV version, is that you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. That you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good. It's this way of the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Yes. Yes. We want to say they did me wrong. I can't go. I can't forgive. I can't let them know. Well, I'm going to be more important on the day. I'm going to ask you who is your father. Because if you don't have love in your heart, your father might just be the devil. Because the Bible, according to 1st and 2nd Timothy 1 and 7 says, he's giving you It's in you. As a believer, as a born again Christian, you 
bless your home. Let me say this to you. If you're not operating in love, if you're still talking about people that did you wrong, I promise you, y'all might need to activate the love that's on the inside of you. Because there's no way that you can say you are a child of God, but you don't know all my God.
And then when you hang up, you say, I'm about coming in today. Y'all got this? <laughs> you can't say that to them that you don't feel good about coming in today. But tell them when you call, call. See, tell them you need to call. You say, you can't do this stuff. I say, I don't feel good. They hang up about coming in today. This 
story of our young lady that I know. This young lady, at the age of 12 years old, she was 12, a very, uh, she was out there, even at 12 years old. Had a first encounter, sexually 12. Just was all over the place, doing anything and everything. Had gotten so many relationships with older men. Ended up going to high school and getting pregnant in the 12th grade. Then got connected with a man and got pregnant probably about five years later with that. And this lady had got to a place in her life where she didn't even believe there was a God. She was not brought up in church. Her mama took her to church one Sunday and her mama joined but never went back. She had an aunt that would kind of take her to their church. And she could do a little bit of acting and she would be in the plays and stuff that they would have. But still didn't have a relationship with God. Didn't know God. Just didn't believe that it was a God. Just didn't believe how could it be a God for all of us people. Just messed up in I think. Met this man moved to the West Coast in California and later find out that the man that she was impregnated by was bound on drugs. But this young lady had only dealt with drug dealers all of her life. So to now be in a relationship with somebody that's now bound to what she had been around being sold was devastating to her. She goes to California. She would go randomly until she finally decided to make a move there. And she had connected with um, a young lady there. And she called the young lady up when she got back to California. She said, hey, I just, you know, want you to know I'm here. And they would get hot together. And this young lady came and picked her up. And when she picked her up, she got in the car, but she noticed the other lady had her child in the car too. And there was one thing they didn't do. They never got high around their kids. <clears throat> and she looked at her and said, hey, why are you open here? And with tears in her eyes, she said, I got sad. And the other lady said, because she, she's so messed up. She thought it was a joke. And she said, what you got? What it called? What's it called? Ain't telling no story. This is not really sick. She said, I got sad. She said, I'll come. Because I came to pick you up because I'm coming to take you to church. The young man said, no, I won't believe you about it. Oh, I'm going to try to go to this church. Let me take me back. Tears in the girl's eyes took her back to where she was. And once she went back, life just even got worse for her. She was already addicted to cough syrup and smoking marijuana. And at that time, ecstasy had came out. And so was addicted to all these different drugs and alcohol. And life just got even worse. And one day the lady called up the friend and said, hey, take me to church. She picked her up and went to church. And it was not a Baptist church. It was another denominational church. But now the church that her auntie and her mom, her mama went to one time. They didn't do all that stuff they were doing over there at the non-denominational church. So to her thinking, she said, I said, now they doing it too much. All them speaking and all the languages, all the running and hollering and shouting, that's just too much. That just ain't real. But because she had, was going through so bad, she was 
She continued to go and no one go. And one day she said to God, if you feel, I want you to touch me like you have touched him.
know the evidence lay hands on me. And I receive the power. I believe if you are born again, Christian, you got it. But I just want to start it up. Because he has no okay my messages. And then I told the brothers, he said, you ready? I said, well, my pastor didn't prove it. And my pastor proved that's how they know it. And he said, you know I preach this Sunday? I said, no, you did this. I promise you. I preach this Sunday. And I was telling him how God was giving it to me. And he said, this is the illustration that I made. So I have to go ahead and give him his credit. I didn't make this one up.
be stirred up in you, you can come and make your way here.
y'all come back again. We will be here Saturday and Sunday. We're having a brunch on Saturday and on Sunday. We will go ahead and end this thing off. So y'all have two other times to come back again with us. But we're going to go ahead and end this thing off. We're going to turn it over to you and let you go ahead and close us out. Father God, we thank you for what our eyes have seen on today. We thank you for what our ears have heard on today. Now, Father God, be with us as we leave this place. Never from your presence, God, but just this place, God. Cover us in your blood. Loose your angels to encamp around us. Keep us from all hurt, harm, or danger. Fight against anything that try to fight against us, but bless everything that try to bless us. We declare and decree that all is well. In Jesus' name we pray. We say